Hi everyone, shall we learn inverse trigonometry? Values of inverse trigonometric functions like cos inverse minus half, sin inverse minus half, tan inverse minus 1 by root 3, etc. What are their principal values? How to remember them? Let's have a detailed study on them. We are ready to consider various angles and a trigonometric function, sin x function. Sin x values are positive for the angles of first quadrant and for second quadrant. But sin x values are negative for the third and fourth quadrant angles. The usual angles we consider are pi by 6, pi by 4, pi by 3, then pi by 2, then the second quadrant 2 pi by 3, 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 6, and then pi. Third quadrant 7 pi by 6, 5 pi by 4, 4 pi by 3. And in the fourth quadrant, the angle will go further. 5 pi by 3 will be here. 7 pi by 4 will be here. But I am going to consider coterminal angles taken in the negative direction. That is, pi by 6 positive here, pi by 6 negative. Pi by 4 here, minus pi by 4. Pi by 3 this and minus pi by 3 here. Okay. Now, sin x value, sin x function is ready here. We want to have the inverse of sin x function. For that, first of all, let's check whether the sin x function is invertible. When do we say a function is invertible? When it is a bijection. What is bijection? A function which is 1, 1 and on 2 is called a bijection. Let's check whether the sin x is a 1, 1 function. Look, sin pi by 6 is half. Sin 5 pi by 6 also is half. Both will be positive and the values are half. See, for different x values, we are getting same result. So, this function is not a 1, 1 function. A 1, 1 function will not give a repeated value. Because of which, this sin x function defined here is not an invertible function. Then how can we have an inverse? By redefining this sin x as a sin x bijection or 1, 1 function. What can we do? We can do one thing. See, as this pi by 6 and 5 by 6, 5 pi by 6 are giving same values, these values, these angles will also give same values but negative. We will choose one set of positive values and one set of negative values. Combining them, this is called a branch. Pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 is a branch. Also, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, this is also a branch. Any of these one single branch you take as the domain for sin x function, it will be then 1, 1 and hence it will be invertible. It is already being decided that the principal branch minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 is going to be considered for sin inverse x function. Minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, if you consider only these angles, never ever consider these angles, then the sin x function will be a 1, 1 function. Hence, will be invertible. So, once we take these as the domain, minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 as the domain for sin x, sin x values go to minus 1 to plus 1 only. Sin x values will never be 5, 6, etc. The interval minus 1 to plus 1 only will be the values. So, when you find the inverse, the domain will be minus 1 to 1 interval and minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 will be the range of inverse function when you reverse it. So, range of sin inverse x function is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. What do we mean by that? Sin inverse of any number, when we calculate, the result should come from these two quadrants only. These angles only will be the results. Minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 only can be the range. Then, what can be the domain? Means, what are the x values that we can take? Can we ever take x equal to 7? Sin inverse 7? No. Because, sin of no angle will be 7. Sin values will lie only between minus 1 and plus 1. Hence, inverse will be defined only from there. So, domain and range of sin inverse function is visible here. Let's consider a few values. Sin inverse of half is pi by 6. Don't think 5 pi by 6 could also be an answer, which is in the second quadrant. That's being already deleted during the process of making it a 1-1 function. 
So sine inverse of half will never be 5 pi by 6 which is of the second quadrant angle. It will be only pi by 6. Sine inverse of minus half cannot be an angle of third quadrant. It will be only minus pi by 6. Likewise, sine inverse of root 3 by 2 is this angle pi by 3. Sine inverse of minus root 3 by 2, it is minus pi by 3. Then, sine inverse of 1 by root 2, it is pi by 4. Sine inverse of minus 1 by root 2, minus pi by 4. No other angle can be the result. No other quadrant angles or coterminal angles will never be the results of inverse function. We have already restricted the domain. Then, sine inverse 1 is pi by 2 just because sine pi by 2 is 1. Sine inverse of minus pi by 2 is sine inverse of minus 1 is minus pi by 2. Sine inverse of 0 is 0. Now, let's consider cosine function. Again, the same angles we are going to consider. Cosine function is positive for first and fourth quadrants. Because of which, we cannot go for this principal branch for cosine. Why? If at all we take the same minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 here, it will merely be a repetition. Cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2. Cos minus pi by 6 also is root 3 by 2 positive. Negative angles cosine values are positive. Cos minus theta is cos theta itself. Repetition is happening here. Because of which, this time the principal region is being already decided as 0 to pi. Positive values will be taken from the first quadrant only like the sine inverse x function. But for negative values, we have the scope only from the second quadrant. So, cos inverse of a negative number will be an angle of second quadrant. How? This 0 to pi is the range of cos inverse x function. Now, domain is minus 1 to 1 itself. Cosine values also cannot be beyond this interval. So, cos inverse of half is pi by 3. Cos inverse of minus half don't go like minus pi by 3, like sine inverse x. What do we do? Cos inverse of a negative number should come an angle from second quadrant. To get that, there is a technique. You just subtract the pi by 3, the positive value, from pi. 180 minus 60 is 120. Pi minus pi by 3, which is equal to 2 pi by 3, this is the result. Cosine 2 pi by 3 is minus half. So, cos inverse of minus half is 2 pi by 3. Then, another one, cos inverse of root 3 by 2 is pi by 6. Cos inverse of minus root 3 by 2 is pi minus pi by 6. Same technique. It is 5 pi by 6. Cos inverse of 1 by root 2 is pi by 4. Cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2 is pi minus pi by 4. That is 3 pi by 4. Similarly, cos inverse of 1 is 0. Cos inverse of minus 1 is pi minus 0, which is pi. Cos inverse of 0 is 1. Cos inverse of 0 is pi by 2. Then, let's do few more numericals. Evaluate sine inverse of sine pi by 3. Sine inverse of sine pi by 3. There is a notion that inverse and a function cancel each other. Which may not happen always. Which would happen only if this angle given is from the principal region. Yes, this time pi by 3 is from the principal region. So it might happen. Still, you shouldn't be going for this cancellation. What you should do is give the priority to the bracket. Write the value of sine pi by 3. Sine pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. Everyone knows. Now think of sine inverse root 3 by 2. Sine inverse root 3 by 2, a positive value, its angle should come from first quadrant. Negative, if it was negative, it would have gone here. So, sine inverse of root 3 by 2, which angle gives sine value root 3 by 2? That's the same pi by 3. So, the answer is pi by 3. Another one. Sine inverse of sine 2 pi by 3. Look, 2 pi by 3 angle is from second quadrant. 2 pi by 3 comes here. But, 2 pi by 3 is to be used for trigonometric function, not for inverse. Sine 2 pi by 3 is okay. You will get a positive value because it is a second quadrant angle. 
And what positive value you get? It's again root 3 by 2 because it is associated with pi by 3. 2 pi by 3 is sine 2 pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. We have reached at the same step. So, sine inverse of root 3 by 2, if it is pi by 3, it has to be same here also. It cannot be different. Look here. They never got cancelled. Sine inverse and sine never got cancelled. Why? Because the angle taken was not from the principal branch. It was from beyond. Sine inverse value, sine inverse function can give you only the value from the principal branch. So, it will take it back to one of the angles from the principal branch. Hence, it is pi by 3. Now, let's go for another one. Sine inverse of minus pi by 3. Sine minus pi by 3, sine minus pi by 3 should be a negative value minus root 3 by 2. Now, what is sine inverse of minus root 3 by 2? Sine inverse function for all the negative values, you should depend on this quadrant. And look which angle will give. Yes, it is minus pi by 3. Once more, it is looking as if they cancelled each other. But it was because the minus pi by 3 angle was taken from the principal branch, which is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, it looks as if they got cancelled. Let's go ahead, evaluate sine inverse of sine 4 pi by 3. Here it's gone. 4 pi by 3 is not an angle of principal branch. 4 pi by 3 is in the third quadrant. So, don't expect it to cancel. What is sine 4 pi by 3? Sine 4 pi by 3 will be negative value which is from the fourth quadrant and that is minus root 3 by 2. See, we already had sine minus sine inverse of minus root 3 by 2. If it was minus pi by 3 for this problem, how can it be different for this problem? It will be the same answer. So, sine inverse of sine 4 pi by 3 is minus pi by 3. No question of cancelling them. Going ahead. Sine inverse of sine 0, giving priority to the bracket sine 0 is 0, sine inverse of 0 is 0. Little more, few more examples. Sine inverse of sine pi, sine pi, sine pi, set trigonometric value, no problem. Sine inverse only has the restriction, sine pi is 0. So, sine inverse 0 is 0. Sine inverse sine pi is 0, sine inverse sine 0 also is 0. Sine inverse of sine 2 pi, sine inverse 0 again, sine 2 pi is 0, sine inverse 0 is 0. Sine inverse of tan pi by 4, oh, sine inverse of tan pi by 4. What's the problem? Give priority to the bracket. Calculate what is tan pi by 4. Tan pi by 4 is 1. Now think of getting sine inverse 1. Sine inverse 1 is pi by 2. That's it. Then, Evaluate sine inverse of cos pi. Cos pi. What is cos pi? Cos pi is minus 1. Sine inverse of minus 1 is minus pi by 2. So just go systematically by giving priority to the bracket and then calculate in the next step. Don't go for any shortcuts. Sine inverse of tan pi by 3. Let's try. Tan pi by 3 is root 3. Sine inverse of root 3. What is the value of root 3? Root 3 is 1.732. Sine inverse of 1 point something. Never possible. Why not? Because this root 3 does not belong to the domain of sine inverse x function. Root 3 is beyond 1. So don't try to get an answer here. It is not defined. Again, not defined doesn't mean that it is infinity. Not defined means undefined. It does not exist. That's it. So, it happened because root 3 did not belong to minus 1 to 1, which was the domain of sine inverse x function. Root 3 was not in this interval. Hence, sine inverse root 3 was not possible. Now, we are heading towards tan inverse x function. Tan x function is positive in the first and third quadrant and negative in the second and fourth quadrant. So, these angles, while considering the trigonometric function, to decide the principal branch for making it 1 1 function, we may take minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, this quadrant for negative and this quadrant for positive, like sin inverse x function. These are the two quadrants we took. Or it could have been taken 
0 to pi, these two quadrants, positive and negative? Yes, like cos inverse x function. Both are possible. But it's already being decided for that. To make it a bijection, to make it a 1, 1 function, tan x functions, principal branch is taken to be minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So the range of tan inverse x will be from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 interval only, like sin inverse x function. But it's not exactly the same. Look, this minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 is a closed interval, which means the endpoints are included in the interval. Here it's an open interval because of which the two extreme endpoints, minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2, do not belong to the range. The reason is simple tan pi by 2 undefined. So, how can we have an inverse function defined on a number to get this angle? That's why that is not in the range. And the domain is complete R, complete real numbers. Because tan function doesn't have a restriction for minus 1 to 1 interval or anything. It can be any real number. So, while defining tan inverse x function, the domain will be complete R. We'll consider some values. Tan inverse 1 is pi by 4. Tan inverse minus 1 is minus pi by 4. Same working as the sin inverse x. Because the quadrants are the same. Same quadrants. Only exception is the endpoints. Sin inverse 1 by root 3 is pi by 6. Sin inverse minus 1 by root 3 is minus pi by 6. Tan inverse root 3 is pi by 3. Tan inverse minus root 3 is minus pi by 3. Tan inverse 0 is 0. Here. We are get, heading towards cot inverse x function now. Cot inverse, cot x will also have same two quadrants, positive, like tan inverse. But again, both of these quadrants are possible to be the principal branch or these two. Here for cot inverse x function, it is being decided that first and second quadrant will be taken. So the range of cot inverse x function will be 0 to pi, like a cos inverse. Cot inverse x also will have the range 0 to pi. So, while finding the values, while calculating the values, excluding 0 and pi, open interval, it is because cot 0 is undefined. Tan 0 is 0, cot 0 is 1 upon 0 undefined. That is why here 0 and pi also excluded. Some values let's consider. Cot inverse 1 is pi by 4. Cot inverse minus 1 is pi minus pi by 4. Same working because we need to get the angle from the second quarter. Pi minus pi by 4 taking LCM, we get it 3 pi by 4. Cot inverse 1 by root 3 is pi by 3. Cot inverse of 0 is pi by 2. Then, let's consider some numericals. Evaluate tan inverse of tan pi by 3. Will they cancel? Let's see. Tan inverse of tan, tan pi by 3. I am going to give the priority to the bracket. Tan pi by 3 is root 3. And what is tan inverse root 3? Tan inverse root 3, root 3 is a positive number. So, the angle should come from first quadrant. The answer is pi by 3. Yes, it was in fact like cancelling each other. It may not happen always. Be careful. Let's see. Tan inverse of tan 4 pi by 3. Which angle is this 4 pi by 3? 4 pi by 3 is in the third quadrant. So tan 4 pi by 3 will also be positive. Positive root 3. Look, tan root 3 is pi by 3 and tan root 3, how can it be something else? It has to be pi by 3 again. This was not the same angle we started with. So they did not cancel. Why? Because the angle was not from the principal branch. So the answer is pi by 3. Evaluate tan inverse of tan minus pi by 3. Minus pi by 3, yes, it is in the first quarter, first principal branch. So tan minus pi by 3 is a negative number minus root 3. Tan inverse minus root 3, tan inverse of a negative number should be taken from this quadrant. That is minus pi by 3. Tan inverse of tan 2 pi by 3. 2 pi by 3, second quadrant angle. In second quadrant, tan value negative. So minus root 3. But tan inverse minus root 3, once we already decided it is minus 3 by 5 by 3, how can it be something else? It's the same. Evaluate tan inverse of cos 0. Oh, no question of cancelling. Then what to do? Go, give priority to the bracket. Cos 0 is 1. So tan inverse of 1, oh, tan inverse of 1 is pi by 4. 
that's it again evaluate cot inverse of root 3 how do we get cot inverse of root 3 cot inverse of root 3 is tan inverse of 1 by root 3 only when value this angle by number taken is positive if it is negative it will not associate with tan inverse function the reason is simple tan inverse negative is taken from the negative quadrant fourth quadrant and cot inverse negative is taken from the second quadrant where you have to do the pi minus theta form so tan inverse 1 by root 3 is pi by 6 then cot inverse of minus root 3 cot inverse of minus root 3 should come from second quadrant unlike the tan inverse tan inverse ne negative should come from here cot inverse negative should come from third quadrant so the angle don't think it is tan inverse minus 1 by root 3 don't go for reciprocal so what to do pi minus cot inverse root 3 and cot inverse root 3 this time it is positive so it can go for reciprocal pi minus tan inverse 1 by root 3 that is tan inverse 1 by root 3 is pi by 6 pi minus pi by 6 it is 5 pi by 6 what is cot inverse 1 by root 3 is equal to tan inverse root 3 yes because positive positive you go for the reciprocal no problem and tan inverse root 3 is pi by 3 cot inverse of tan 2 pi by 3 tan 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 is a second quadrant angle tan is negative tan 2 pi by 3 is minus root 3 now the question is what is cot inverse of minus root 3 cot inverse of negative second quadrant oh luckily we are getting the angle pi minus tan inverse of 1 by root 3 and that is pi minus pi by 6 which is equal to 5 pi by 6 next is cosec inverse x function that is also associated to sin theta sin theta reciprocal cosec theta cosec theta functions inverse is cosec inverse so the two quadrants first and second quadrant positive third and fourth quadrant negative just like sine inverse x function the range is taken as negative and first quadrant only but cosec inverse 0 is not defined so this number is deleted from this interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 cosec inverse 0 is not defined because cosec 0 is reciprocal of sin 0 sin 0 is 0 reciprocal of 0 1 by 0 is undefined so in the range you will never get 0 as the result because cosec of no angle can be equal to 0 and the domain also has a speciality sin function it takes the values from minus 1 to 1. Sign value will not be more than 1. Cannot be less than minus 1. So cosec value are the reciprocal of sign values. The numbers which are between minus 1 and 1, when you take the reciprocal, they will go outside this interval minus 1, 1. Like if x is taken half, reciprocal of half is 2, which is beyond this interval. So, the domain for cosec inverse will be complete real numbers minus this interval. But when you subtract the interval, don't subtract the closed interval. If you subtract the closed interval, this 1 and minus 1 will also go. But that should be included in the domain of cos inverse x because cos inverse 1 is possible, cos inverse minus 1 is possible. So, don't delete it. This is a domain, this is a range. Now using that, how do we get the values? Cosec inverse 2. Cosec inverse 2. Cosec inverse 2 is that angle whose cosec is 2. Cosec is 2 means sine value should be half. Oh, that is pi by 6. Cosec inverse 2 is pi by 6. We obtain like this. And what about cosec inverse minus 2? Negative angle because the principal region is already being decided. Minus pi by 6. Cosec inverse 2 by root 3. Think of that angle where sine value is root 3 by 2. It's reciprocal. So we have pi by 3 angle. What about minus 2, 2 by root 3? Minus pi by 3. Cosec inverse root 2 
it is pi by 4 because sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Cosec pi by 4 is root 2. Reciprocal. Cosec inverse minus root 2 is minus pi by 4. Cosec inverse 1 is pi by 2. Cosec inverse minus 1 is minus pi by 2, etc. Now we will go for sec inverse x function. Things are almost the same as of cosec inverse. But only thing is the dominal range will be decided in a similar manner. But like the cos inverse function, first and second quadrant should be the range 0 to pi. But not completely 0 to pi. You need to delete this pi by 2 from here. Why pi by 2 deleted? Because cos pi by 2 is 0 and sec pi by 2 is undefined. Reciprocal of 0, 1 by 0. Because of which this angle will never be the result. So in the range, pi by 2 is deleted. And domain, exactly how we decided the domain here, r minus, open interval minus 1 to 1. This pi by 2 is being deleted. Now some values we will consider. Sec inverse 2 by root 3 is pi by 6. Just because cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2. Sec pi by 6 is 2 by root 3. Sec inverse of 2 by root 3 is pi by 6. First quadrant angle pi by 6. Whereas sec inverse minus 2 by root 3 will be. Will not be pi by 6. Because negative angles are not in the principal branch here. So we need to go to the second quadrant. Whenever we need to go to the second quadrant, we do this pi minus angle. Second quadrant, pi minus. So pi minus pi by 6. Why pi by 6? Because for positive 2 by root 3, it was pi by 6. Use that here. That's equal to 5 pi by 6. Second verse root 2. It is pi by 4. Second verse minus root 2 is pi minus pi by 4, root 3 by 4. Second verse 1 is 0. Second verse minus 1 is pi minus 0. That is 0. Some examples now. Cosec inverse 2 is sine inverse half. Because sine of some angle is half. So cosec of that angle will be reciprocal of half. That is 2. Which is equal to pi by 6 here. Evaluate cosec inverse sine 2 pi. What is the value of sine 2 pi? Sin 2 pi is 0. Cosec inverse 0. Cosec inverse 0. Is it ever possible? No. Because in the domain, in the range, cosec inverse 0 is not possible. R minus minus 1 to 1 is the domain. 0 is between minus 1 and 1. That is being already deleted from the domain. So cosec inverse 0 is not possible, not defined. Because 0 does not belong to the domain of cosec inverse function. Evaluate sec inverse of cos pi. Cos pi is minus 1. Sec inverse of minus 1 is pi. Cosec inverse of tan pi by 4. Tan pi by 4 is 1. Cosec inverse 1 is pi by 2. Sec inverse tan pi by 4. Tan pi by 4 is again 1. Sec inverse 1 is. So, as a whole summary, you need to remember this. Sin, in x, sin inverse x, cosec inverse x and tan inverse x. Their range will be these two quadrants. Negative angle quadrants involved. For positive values, first quadrant. For negative values, negative angles. Which are the inverse? Sin inverse x, cosec inverse x and tan inverse x. Whereas, Cos inverse x, sec inverse x and cot inverse x. They take negative value from second quadrant. Positive is again first quadrant only. That cannot change. So negative is taken from second quadrant. Whenever you have to take the value from second quadrant, go for this pi minus theta technique. Get the theta for the positive value and then pi minus that angle will be the result. Pi minus theta for negative. Second quadrant for cos inverse, sec inverse and cot inverse. Found it useful? Don't forget to subscribe Marriott Joseph channel for variety of examples and various topics.